just to let you know guys, um, it's a really terrible idea to be reading um, books like this, like Brandon Sanderson books, um, like late at night because then you finish it and it's like 10.30 and you're like, okay, it's time to go to bed because I have an eight o'clock class tomorrow morning and then you're just lying awake like, oh, the reveals, I need to go check the fan website and then you, and then you like <laughs> go to bed at like 12.30 and then you get up the next morning and you're just like, I feel dead and I have to go to class. Hello everybody, it's been a while. Um, as you can see, this is not where I filmed my last video. I am hundreds of miles away in a dorm room um, here in college, basically. So um, I took a break from filming videos for YouTube, um, mostly for college, also because I was kind of getting tired and needed to take a break, and I think that was really good. And um, as far as me making videos in the future, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Um, but I wanted to do this review and I wanted to kind of update it. And so now you can see my beautiful bookshelf as well. I mean, I, I don't know. I really like my bookshelf now. It's more beautiful than it was at home. And in like two weeks, I have to pack it all up and go back home. So that sucks. All right. So today I'm going to be reviewing Dawn Shard. So Dawn Shard is a novella by Brandon Sanderson. It came out Today it was two days ago, um, probably by the time I have this video out it'll be a little bit longer than that, but this novella is in the Stormlight Archive, and it is right after Oathbringer, which is book three, and before Rhythm of War, the fourth book, which comes out in like a week, and I am like so, so ready for this book. Um, if you can't tell, I'm a huge, um, I'm a huge Cosmere fan, I'm a huge Stormlight fan, um, the Way of Kings is my favorite book of all time. That's obviously going to influence this review. Um, but yeah, so let's just get into it. So Dawn Shard is a novella about, um, mainly about Risen and about Lopin. So um, if you're familiar with the Stormlight Archive, Risen is a character who shows up in a couple of interludes. She is a Thalen. Um, she was kind of an apprentice in books before this. Um, that's not what she is in this book, and I don't want to get into it too much. There's not too much spoilers, um, but she's in a very interesting position in this book. Um, and the second major character is Lopin. A quick note before I go on, um, if you have not read Oathbringer, which is the third book in the Stormlight Archive, I would not recommend reading Dawn Shard, because Dawn Shard, um, I mean, it doesn't go deep into necessarily all of the aspects, but it does have spoilers for some of these things, and it's just going to make so much more sense if you have read Oathbringer. And that said, um, if you have, say, read only the Stormlight Archive of Brandon Sanderson's works, I'm not exactly sure why you would have only read the Stormlight Archive since that's the most difficult to get into, but if, say, you haven't read Mistborn or something like that, I think you can still really enjoy Dawn Shard, but there are some things that are going to be confusing into you, and I'll <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. The way that I'm going to do this review is I'm going to go through um, the aspects of plot, characters, setting, and content warnings. Um, that's kind of basically what I've done in the past for my videos, but um, when I joined Goodreads, which you can find that, um, my Goodreads account below in the content description. Wow, I'm bad at this. When I joined Goodreads, I kind of came up with the more streamlined method of doing my reviews so that it was easy for me to do each review and that was just addressing each of these areas um, that makes it really easy for me to do and I've just decided well I'll just make sure that I do my YouTube videos the exact same way so we're gonna start like that so um, let's start with the plot of Dawn Shard um, so I felt like this was maybe the weakest aspect of the novella um, it wasn't bad I thought like the plot was interesting like um, it didn't, like, go in the most painful ways that it could have. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm very sensitive to certain plot turns that I don't want to happen, and I appreciated the ways that the plot went, and I felt like it was interesting. My main complaint with the plot is that a lot of it felt rushed. So, the main plot is on a sea voyage, and um, it... I didn't quite get the sense of length that I was expecting from Brandon Sanderson. I was expecting more depth, more, um, more exploration, which it makes sense that he didn't get that into that because this is a novella. Um, he doesn't have 400,000 words of 
ginormous novel to um, spend time with. But as far as Ocean Voyage felt, um, especially with some of the foreshadowing and some of the dread that I was expecting, it kind of felt rushed. Um, and that's about where I'm going to end my complaints because, oh man, that climax. Oh, that climax. Okay, so background on the climax. Um, Brandon Sanderson has this thing where he'll just dump everything on you in the climax at the end of the book. And he did that here. And he did that in a very interesting way. So um, there's going to be a little bit of a split, I think, between people who read this. There are going to be people who have read all of Brandon Sanderson's works, know what the Cosmere is, and are like super down for figuring all this out. And there are people who say have read Br some of Brandon Sanderson's works and like them and maybe have read just like one series maybe not but they're not quite as invested and I think there's going to be a split between whether or not you like this climax or not because um for the Cosmere people like there were these moments where they, he's just saying he's like you're saying it out loud you're saying all of our theorizations and things out loud and for like the let's just say Cosmere people um the moment that we heard it was named Dawn Shard, we were all like, ah, ah. <laughs> so um, the climax for this, I, I, all I can say to you if you're one of those people is go read it, go read it, please go read it. And if you're not one of those people, then I have some bad news because you're probably going to be confused by the ending. Um, so not confused as in you won't be able to get what's happening but there will be aspects that they're talking about things you're gonna be like um what on earth is going on so I had a little bit of this dissonance when I first read Oathbringer so when I first read Oathbringer I had read Way of Kings Ra Words of Radiance I was on a roll I read Oathbringer and there were some things that I'm like okay what on earth and part of that was because I thought that the Stormlight Archive was a trilogy it's not it's a 10 book series um don't go into it thinking it's a trilogy um, and then part of that was that I didn't understand Brandon Sanderson's fic fantasy works. So basically, um, the Cosmere is a thing you'll hear a lot with Brandon Sanderson fans, and that's basically all of his fantasy works are interconnected. So, um, say Mistborn. Um, Mistborn is one of his most popular works, and it's a trilogy on a certain world, and you can enjoy it just like that, but it is part of a larger universe. So. There's the world of Mistborn, and then there's the world of the Way of Kings. And it's completely different. You don't have to have read Mistborn, um, but they are connected. And these connections will come up a lot in, say, the magic and in the really higher, really high connections that get made. And so it can be really helpful, say, when you're wondering, okay, where did all of these antagonists in the Way of Kings come from? to say, oh, I remember in Mistborn, something like this happened, and to know, okay, there's a bigger framework, so it's not just weirdness happening. I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well. So basically, you don't have to have read the entire Cosmere to enjoy his books, but sometimes it really helps. And Don Shard is one of those times when it really helps. So, um, yeah, so basically there are some big reveals for people who basically know a little bit about this network behind the scenes, what Brandon Sanderson's trying to do. We've known about this, we've theorized about this, and he makes some big reveals, and he comes out and says, okay, here's what's going on. It, it, he doesn't really say that, but he comes pretty close. And if you don't quite understand what that is, then you might be a little bit stuck. Um, but if you want to read the novella anyways, then um, let me see if I can tell you enough to... Um, let you know what's going on and so this is huge spoilers for like everything so um go to the timestamp um somewhere on the screen if you don't want to hear this but so basically i'll try to summarize what's going on so once upon a time in the cosmere there was this being called adonalsium basically god we don't really know a ton but basically he created the universe and 16 beings humans also there were non-humans it's kind of weird but basically humans killed Adonalsium and they split up his power into 16 um, different sets of power called shards and each of them took one of these shards and basically became a smaller god. So um, this is clear in say Mistborn where um, <laughs> there are a couple of these gods. There are 
usually these gods called shards um, hanging around most of the places it happens in the way of kings so basically that's all you need to know I think to get the basics of this um, it helps if you have a basis in the stormlight archive if you have a basis in the stormlight archive you know what I'm talking about when I talk about these shards um, I would say that's what you need to know going into Don Shard. There might be other stuff that you'd be confused about, but I think that that would kind of give you some context on what's going on. I'm going to move to characters. I feel like this was one of the strongest parts of the book. Um, discounting that whole climax dead reveal things, if you're not going for all of the crazy stuff that Cosmere people learned, this is one of the strongest parts of the book. So basically in this book, there's somebody who is paraplegic. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I didn't either. Um, basically it means somebody who is disabled in, I think in that they can't use their legs. I think they have to use a wheelchair, something along those lines. So basically they can't walk. And there is a main character who is like that. And um, Brandon Sanderson kind of explored a little bit of what that felt like and the kind of how that had affected that character. It, I mean, it could have been deeper, like I've, there's more emotionally resonant stuff like Kaladin in The Way of Kings. This could just be more because I resonate less with being disabled than with having depression. Um, but basically he explored that and I felt like that was really cool. There were some really awesome moments in there, like just some plot moments that kind of related to character moments. Brandon Sanderson's is really good at making character moments and plot moments kind of mesh together and there were some like oh my gosh, that I'm just like so happy for this character kind of moments. And there were, man, there were some awesome things. Um, basically, I, I'm, I can just say it, the paraplegic character is risen um, because of some stuff in Oathbringer. <laughs> She's paraplegic now, but that was really cool to watch. I, it worked really well. Um, there were some side characters as well. Cord, um, I liked Cord, Huyo, um, people like him a lot. Um, I, I liked him too, he was fun. So this might be a controversial opinion, but I think the character arc that affected me the most was the Lopin's character arc. So um, if you don't know, um, in fandom the Lopin is kind of controversial. Some people think he's annoying and some people like him, like I do. Um, and it's kind of funny um, hearing about this book. It sounds like kind of across the board people liked what was done with the Lopin's character, which is kind of cool that Brandon pulled that off. Um, and I really did feel like um, it was really good what was done with his character. And I think I'm going to talk about this in two segments, um, non-spoiler and spoiler, because I have a personal story relating to spoilerliness about why I liked the Lopin's characterization so much. So for um, non-spoiler, there was some really cool stuff, some really cool dynamics between Risen and the Lopin. So um, at one point the Lopin, um, had lost an arm and so he is kind of commiserating with um, Risen about her disability and doing so in a way that is very much the Lopin um, and some people might not like that I think it's funny that is okay um, but in in other words that dynamic was great and moving on into the climax of the story so the Lopin is very unique um, I'm not going to get into the spoilers yet, but the Lopin is unique and he, his journey as a Knight Radiant, he's a Knight Radiant by the way, um, has been not quite the same as anything else we've really seen. So Brandon Sander, his sin has explicitly said that he's a little bit different than other people just in the way that he um, has become a Knight Radiant and how he's progressing. And so it's, I was expecting something different. I was kind of like, huh, oh, what's gonna happen with this? And it was done very well. I liked it. I liked it. So moving on into spoilers. So um, the Lopin says his third ideal after um, his cousin Huyo says his third ideal. And so the third ideal of the Windrunners, which is the order they are, is I will protect even those I hate so long as it is right. Now there are variations of this. Um, people have done things like I will protect even those I hate even if that person is myself. That was a really cool oath. Um, but it kind of varies from person to person, but that's the general gist of the third oath. So um, what happens is for Huyo is they're fighting this giant monster, Lopin and Huyo, and Lopin runs out of stormlight because they, you gotta have that at the dramatic moments. They run out of stormlight, no! And so he falls down and here's the monster. And it's like, oh no, and then Huyo steps in front of him and then he looks at the Lopin 
and then he looks back and then like this the light kind of zhooshes out from him and the they have done the third ideal and then he gets a shard blade because that's what happens when you get the third ideal it's like oh he said the third ideal but then it's also like wait a minute he looked at the lopeman before he did that and so he's protecting somebody and so um the reader is like oh my gosh and um lopen puts this together too and so once they're all safe and not dying um the lopen is like um hi so you kind of stepped in front of me right before you said the third ideal and who is like who is like Okay, so I don't hate you, but you're kind of annoying. <laughs> and, oh man, that was kind of, I mean, that's kind of funny in like a, oh yeah, he would be kind of annoying, and there are lots of people who are annoyed by him, and this makes total sense sort of way. And we stay in Lopin's point of view as we he goes off and is basically like, huh. And I really appreciated that. And so here, let me tell my personal story before I get on with this. So, um, I'm not like the Lopin. Uh, he's very distinctive, but I do kind of remember when I was younger, I was not really, let's say popular. Um, I was, I enjoyed my specific things, mainly science and sometimes books and especially writing towards um, my middle school years. And I wanted to talk about that. And I talked about it as much as I could and um, blabbed a lot and didn't really know how to be good in social situations. And then kind of worked against me for a lot of my um, younger years. And I kind of got to this point where I kind of realized, oh, if I stop talking about things that I enjoy, then people seem to like me more. And it's kind of this sad story of me kind of killing part of who I was in order to be able to make friends easier. And coming to college has kind of helped me be like, oh, these are parts of my personality that are valuable and that I should treasure rather than try to shut up. But when I kind of saw the Lopin be like, huh, I'm annoying people. And this part of me that I do to make people happy and to deal with my own issues has is grating on people. It was just kind of like, oh man, I know exactly how that feels. And there was this passage where basically the Lopin is kind of like, well, do I need to change or like, Maybe they'd like that, a quiet lopin. Uh, I can just stop trying and just conform and just kill my, kill my personality, my soul, in an attempt to not annoy people. And I was, and he doesn't say that. Instead, he um, <laughs> unknowingly says the third ideal, and this is kind of running a gag, but um, he says the third ideal. I will protect others even from myself. So he thinks of it as a, no, I'm not going to be a quiet lopin, but I'm going to try to not be annoying, as annoying to people. I'll try to tone it down sometimes. I will protect others even from myself and, oh, look, I have a shard blade. Ah, Stormfather, why? <laughs> I thought that was really funny, but also at the same time, I was just kind of hurting inside because I'm like, oh, wow. So that is a really, I think that's a good way of dealing with it. It's not... I'm not valuable or this isn't good, but there are times for this and there are times not for this and I'm going to tone down the annoyingness for others sake and I'm like, uh, I, I kind of wish that that had been my experience rather than becoming quiet lopin. All right, moving on from awkward personal stories to setting. So um, the setting, um, again, here's a little bit of a divide between um, Cosmere people and not really Cosmere people. Um, so. Let's start with non-Cosmere people. For me, the setting was a little bit confusing because I didn't have a map. So um, the sea voyage is, f I forget where it was from. I think it was from Thelena to Akina, which is a part of Amia, which is a little islands. I'm not exactly sure where. I really needed the map and I didn't get it out to look where they were going. And I was a little confused, like, okay, they're stopping at this place, where is this? So basically just, just find a map, just Google Roshar map and kind of be like, okay, where are they? Where are they going? Okay. And if you're a fantasy reader, you probably already did that. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I should have done that. Um, but that would probably make part of this better. And so um, next, if you um, have read the Stormlight Archive even, I think that your interest might be a little bit piqued. Um, the scouring of Amia has been mentioned several times. We've heard of things like the Amians, the Sia Amians, and I think the Dissian Amians, I, which have been known in other circles as something else, which we see more of. Um, if you're 
say, I don't know if you're quite a casual Stormlight fan, if you would be as interested, but if you are a big Stormlight fan, or if you're a Cosmere fan, you probably are like, Amia, let's see Amia, which is awesome because, um, yeah, Amia has been kind of a secret for a while, and we get to visit Amia, and Amia was cool. It wasn't a disappointment. It was kind of, it was very interesting, and I, <laughs> um, wow, I was not expecting the reveal that I got there, which is more related to, like, the Cosmere stuff, um, that I talked about earlier, but... Suffice to say, um, the setting as relates to the climax, it was very interesting. I enjoyed it. Moving on. Okay, that's all for the reviews. So um, I did kind of want to talk a little bit about um, my channel um, and stuff like that. So I haven't been posting videos for a long time, and I talked about that a little bit at the start of the video. And I kind of wanted to talk about my plan forward um, because um, I don't think that I can sustainably post um, book reviews at the same rate as I was in the past. So um, <laughs> my college semester is almost over, which is awesome, and I'll have a two-week break, and it'll be great, and then I'll go back to school, and it will be very busy again. And I know that I could not have handled um, my YouTube schedule um, with all of the other stuff that I was doing this semester, so there's going to need to be some changes. Also, um, I've kind of looked over my um, goals for my platform. Um, I have this, I started this channel mainly as a writing platform, which didn't really happen. It was more of a reading platform, which I enjoy. And I kind of noticed that I tended to review books that I enjoyed. Um, and they, I was trying to stay within the genre convictions of YA, maybe Christian, but it just kind of kept drifting towards the books that I liked, which was basically, uh, Brandon Sanderson times like 10. Um, and like C.S. Lewis and stuff like that. And so I think that I would like to continue in that vein. So I think that in the future, I want to focus more on my writing than on being a YouTuber. So um, that means doing more writing than posting videos, which that those don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think that I may end up posting writing related content, not advice because uh, I don't trust myself to give advice necessarily, but maybe fun writing stuff. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, as far as reviews go, I still want to do that. I, this Don Shard review was fun. I want to review Rhythm of War. I want to, I read, um, Christopher Paolini's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I want to review that. Um, but basically, um, I will review stuff, but mostly, mostly stuff that I have enjoyed and have wanted to read and kind of just really want to read rather than just reading stuff for the sake of reviewing it. And also, I've noticed that it will probably not be YA anymore because um, my reading tastes have kind of drifted. I'm realizing that adult fantasy, more adult sci-fi is kind of my thing. I still enjoy YA, but I probably won't focus on that. And um, because of that adult, it probably will be slightly less Christian. But I still do, I am committed to being like, okay, here are the content warnings. Here's what could be scarring um, because that's really helpful for me. Um, so that's what I expect to do. Um, I want to post a video um, soon just kind of talking about me and hopefully you can get to know me more as a writer and my other stuff that I do when I post that video. But thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you if you're still there from months ago. Thank you for waiting so long for me to post this video and then I just go and post another Sanderson review. Okay, um, that's all for today. Um, if you like this video, you could mm, like it. <laughs> uh, that was terrible. Um, and you could subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.